Hello, welcome to another episode of Walk the Word. Good to have you with us again. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're, you're doing well as we seek just to read God's Word together and then put it into practice in our lives. And um, so we are in a study in Mark at the moment. We're in Mark chapter 14. So if you want to turn there in your Bibles, I'm going to be reading from uh, verse 12, um, or you can read along in the description box as usual below this video. Um, so we're reading from Mark chapter 14, Verse 12, it says, On the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, say to the owner of the house as he enters. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. How will, he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready, make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the 12 while they were reclining at the table eating. He said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Okay, so we saw, didn't we, in the last session, just a few verses before, that basically Judas has um, decided to betray Jesus. He's chosen already. He's, he's predetermined. He's going to be betray Jesus and he's going to get paid money to do so. We saw how actually he was really in it for the wrong reasons. He wanted to follow Jesus from what he could get, not from what he can give. Okay, so I do want to encourage you, if you missed that session, do, do go back, um, do go back there and, and catch up. Um, but here, so here we find, don't we, that the Passover has come. This is a customary feast. This is uh, celebrating what, what happened with Moses and the Israelites as they were delivered from, uh, from Egypt. And, um, and, they're, and they're preparing the Passover meal to celebrate it. Obviously, Jesus is going to become the new Passover lamb. Yeah, he's, that's where he's headed. He knows where he's going. He says, doesn't he, uh, that... The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. So he knows where he's going. Isaiah prophesies that, you know, he will be pierced for our transgressions. He will be crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace will be upon him. So Jesus knows he's going to be the new Passover lamb. But even as they're sitting there eating this Passover meal, there is a hypocrite among, amongst them. There is a betrayer amongst them. And it seems outrageous, doesn't it, that um, this guy, Judas, who's already decided to betray Jesus, is now just sitting there, comfortable with the 12, with Jesus. And it says, Jesus says, one who is eating with me. I mean, this, this is one that was close to Jesus. This is one that was near to him. He was sat eating. He says, one who dips bread into the bowl with me will be the one that betrays him ultimately. He's saying, look, one that I have fellowship one with, one that I have befriended, one that is close to me, so close that he will sit, he's sitting and eating with me. That's how close Jesus, uh, Judas is to Jesus. He's in his inner circle. He's in his inner ring, if you like, of friends. One who was able to sit and eat with Jesus. That's how close Judas was to Jesus. And um, it's very easy, isn't it, to, to look at this and be horrified. How could Judas do this? How could he sit and eat with Jesus, knowing full well what he was about to do? And it's very easy to condemn him. It's very easy to judge him. But I just wonder, how, I, how might we, um, you know, we, we've perhaps made a profession of faith to follow Jesus. We've said, yeah, I'm in with you, Jesus. But it's very easy, isn't it, 
to, to sit and judge others and look at their failures and how, how much they've betrayed Jesus. And I wonder, are we betraying Jesus are we, or are we being faithful to him? We can claim to have fellowship with him and yet in all kinds of ways, we can still deny him, can't we? We can still be hypocrites. We can say, yeah, I have fellowship with Jesus. I go to church, I do all the right things but I wonder if our lives really match up. So that's just what I wanna raise as we kind of um, look at this session today. Easy to judge Judas, but let's, instead of judging Judas, why don't we look at ourselves and think, is there any area of my life where perhaps I'm betraying Jesus? Is there any area of my life where perhaps I'm being a hypocrite? You know, perhaps there's an area of, of sin in your life that you're harboring. And you have no intention, actually, to give that up for Jesus. Even though Jesus says, come follow me, you must take up your cross daily and follow me. That means dying to your old way of life. You know, Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer me that lives, it's him. So there's a, there's a putting to death of our old way of life. And yet in all kinds of ways, we can still harbour sin in our life, can't we? Sometimes we're not, perhaps not intentional, but sometimes intentional, sometimes there's areas of sin in our life that we have, we have no intention of giving up for Jesus. We know it's wrong. We know the Bible says something different. And yet we have no intention of putting that thing to death in our life. I want to urge you, don't be like Judas. Don't be a betrayer. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be someone that says, yeah, I follow Jesus. I claim fellowship with Jesus. But actually, you're not bringing your life into line with him. You're harbouring sin in your life. It's time to give that up. It's time to let that thing go. Perhaps it's unforgiveness in your heart. You know, Jesus is very clear that we've got to forgive others as we've been forgive, forgiven. It's in the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? And it's very easy to claim fellowship with Jesus and say, yeah, I've been forgiven. God has forgiven me from all my sins. I have fellowship now with Christ and yet harbour unforgiveness in our heart towards others. Is there someone that you're holding out on, you're bearing a grudge against, that you're holding on to unforgiveness about? Jesus is very clear. You know, you've got to, if, if, as a recipient of God's grace and God's forgiveness, we need to pass that on to others. So don't let unforgiveness get in the way of your fellowship. As you are fellowshipping with Jesus Christ, you know, don't let unforgiveness become an obstacle and a stumbling block. Or perhaps, and this is a big one, this is a challenging one, perhaps we haven't fully surrendered to God's will and God's kingdom. You know, the, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. If we're honest, we can claim fellowship with Jesus and say, yeah, I'm going to church, all of this stuff, but actually we're still harbouring unforgiveness in our hearts. Sorry, we're still harbouring our own kingdoms in, in our heart. We're, we're building our kingdom rather than God's kingdom. If we're honest, we're more about our kingdom. We're more about our will. We're more about what we want from life than what? About what God wants from life. God wants us to do. And so I want to encourage you, you know, seek first the kingdom. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So important that we get to grips with that. And it's all too easy to look at G Judas and say, wow, he's a betrayer. He's He's so awful. Rather than judging him, I want us to take that opportunity to think about our own lives. Are, are our lives matching up to our claim to have fellowship with Jesus? Something to think about there. So to take that away, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Perhaps think about what is it in your life that God might be wanting to highlight and turn that into prayer and give it to him. And let's be those who fellowship with Christ. You know, we get to sit and eat with him. We fellowship with him. But let our lives match up to that, okay? Have a great day and we'll see you again soon.